Well, let's go to our next major point, and that is the developmental phases of a church plant. So what we're going to look at here is the typical phases that a new church will go through and the process that the church planter has to be aware of. Because there are certain things that need to be done at different points along the road of planting a church. And so what we're going to have here is, is uh, not really a checklist, but certainly a list of things that the church planter needs to be aware of, potential pitfalls, problems that can happen during different points along the stage of the development of an individual church plant. Now there's been a number of different ways to look at this. Uh, David Hasselgrave in his book on cross-cultural church planting uh, developed what he called this Pauline cycle. So he looked at the way the Apostle Paul planted churches and uh, examined that and he said there seems to be sort of a, a cycle that he went through in planting churches. At the very core, and you can see in this diagram, this is from his book, Planting Churches Cross-Culturally. At the very core, you have the Holy Spirit directing the entire process uh, in Acts 13, the calling of uh, Paul and Barnabas, uh, prayer, uh, that Paul and Barnabas were called in, in while the church was praying and fasting. Uh, scripture is the foundation that the teaching of the Bible is going to be the ultimate uh, foundation. And then the church being the agency of sending and receiving the church planter and making this happen. That's just sort of the spiritual core of this process. And then he kind of talks about the missionaries being commissioned as Paul and Barnabas were sent out, the audience being contacted, the first contact with the people where they arrive, gospel being communicated through preaching or teaching, the hearers being converted. So as people hear that message, they embrace Christ and put their faith in him. Then the believers being congregated to actually form uh, the church congregation, their faith confirmed through teaching, leadership consecrated, so you have Paul and Barnabas installing elders, Acts 14, 23. Then the believers being commended to the Lord, where Paul and Barnabas says, now you have your leaders and we commend you to the Lord, we will be now moving on. And so, but even though Paul and Barnabas, the, the initial uh, church planters move on, they continue to be in contact, visiting the churches on their next trip through or writing letters, and then uh, going back to their sending church, Paul and Barnabas go back to Antioch. And so this is sort of a typical missionary uh, approach, entering, preaching, converting, gathering, uh, developing leaders, commending the Lord, and then moving on. This is a so-called Pauline cycle. And you can look at this diagram in more detail and see the scriptures that he is uh, giving to that, uh, to each one of those, those phases. And so many people have found this to be helpful. It's pretty straightforward. Another way of looking at the development of a church is, was developed by Robert Logan, Bob Logan, uh, the church planting life cycle. And this has been adapted and changed around and used by quite a few different people who have uh, written and taught on church planting. And he uses sort of the biological life cycle and um, to sort of summarize his way, he's looking at the life of the church, not so much Hesselgrave looked at what the missionary kind of does. And Logan is really looking at the church itself. And so you could sort of begin uh, with the family planning idea. So do we want to have a baby or not? And uh, this has to do with sort of the motivation, the getting approval, maybe you need to get approval from a denomination or the mother church has to be motivated. Yes, we want to have a baby. I don't think Logan actually had that one in there, but uh, I think it's part of the decision-making process. Well, then he has, has what you call conception. This is when that, that baby is conceived in the mother's womb. And that's when you say, yes, the decision is made. We are going to plant a church. We target maybe this community or this city and the plan has been decided upon. Well, then comes the prenatal development. So inside the mother's womb, that baby's developing and it's beginning to develop arms and legs and so on. And this is before you really go public, but he says, what you're doing here is you're, you're developing your plan. What will be our evangelistic plan? Let's build our team. Who are going to be the people that are gonna help launch this church? Um, uh, what, is, what style of church do we want to have? Um, 
And so you're building that team, you're preparing that team, you're praying, you're spiritually, you're doing research of the people that you're trying to reach. And then he says you come to that day where the baby is born. Uh, and that it would be sort of your first public worship services. So you've been preparing sort of like that baby in the womb, and then comes the birth. And uh, so your first public worship services are the birth of the church when it really goes uh, public. Well, then you have to develop that it's just like a little toddler has to sort of grow, and it learns to crawl, learns to walk, grows up, and so you've got to develop the life of that uh, church and then hopefully it develops into maturity uh, where its ministries are, are strong, its leaders are strong, and then parenthood where that church then has its baby and the life cycle starts all over again. And so this is sort of the life cycle approach. And again, this is very straightforward and uh, the materials that are often provided will tell you the different things to be uh, giving attention to, checklists and so on for these different phases. Um, one of the critique points on this particular approach is that the birth is sort of given as, as the, or, or public worship is defined as the birth of the church. And many people would say, well, really, if you've got a team of people who are living on the location, uh, they're really already kind of the embryo. They're really already a church. Um, or others would say, uh, what about house churches? some of those don't ever really have public worship in the usual sense. And so uh, this, this approach has been uh, more the attractional model. If you recall, we were talking about the attractional approach uh, where you invite people to, to church services or meetings. Um, it's probably maybe more geared to Western settings where public worship is a stronger feature of the church. Uh, and so it does have some limitations, but it's also uh, very helpful. Now, in our book, in this book here, Global Church Planting, uh, we go and develop what we call the developmental phases of pioneer missionary church planting. And um, it's similar to these others, but just has slightly different emphases because we build in the whole idea of multiplication and reproduction into the different phases. And so that makes it a little bit different than the other ones. And, uh, you'll have to really get the book to get the details because that would take way too long um, to go into a lot of detail here. But the overview is like this. Um, there are the basic phases of preparing before the team actually enters the location, the launching of it as you're beginning to really do the initial evangelism, establishing, you're gathering, and then structuring and then reproducing. Now, what are the specific tasks that go on? Well, one of the preparing is targeting commissioning. So you decide the location and uh, who's gonna be the team that's on that. And there's a second aspect. Once you've determined where and who, now you begin to research and you will have a whole section we talk about research and church planting. But understanding the people, understanding the community, what are the things we need to know about this community? What are the things we need to know to build a strategy? And then launching is mainly evangelism and disciple making. Establishing is congregating those disciples, maturing so they begin to have this feeling we are a church. We're not just individual believers, but we are now taking on the life of, a, of the body of Christ. And then structuring will be to expand ministries. So we may start some of those specialized ministries, youth ministry, uh, we're developing leaders, we're empowering the local people to lead those ministries. Remember, we only grow the church with the people that God gives us. We only grow the ministries with the people that God gives us. And so we're empowering the local people to lead that youth ministry or to lead that children's work. And then the reproducing is you strengthen that church and then you send out people, whether they're foreign missionaries, whether they're a daughter church plant, whether it's a team that would become a uh, a uh, colonization church plant reproducing so and then to each of those there would be a list of tasks now what is the role of the apostolic church planter well initially team builder and learner and that role revolves evolves and remember we talked about the different M's of the 
church planner, motor and model, got to do all the work in the beginning phase. Then becomes that mobilizer and mentor, training others. And then becomes that multiplier, helping others train others. And then the memory as that apostolic church planter phases out. Now, if you're a more pastoral church planner, you're probably going to stay with it. But I believe even if you're a pastoral church planner, you've got to be developing your local people. And so these elements uh, remain in place. So remember to build reproduction into every phase. Now, just very quickly, we'll go through some of the key things that need to be happening in these different phases. Even a small contribution can make a big difference. Jesus fed 5,000 people because of a little boy's five loaves. Regardless of the amount, your contribution is very important and greatly appreciated. Visit us at tvsseminary.com.